talked to a young lady and her brother never had anything for God, never had anything for the house of God, won't go to church, won't have anything to do with church. And she told me on Friday night, she said, Brother Steve, I've got my brother going to your church's website and said he's been listening to y'all services on YouTube. You click there and, and she said, that's an amazing thing. She said for him to do that. So you just never know. May not have it on the website this morning. <laughs> So you just never know. And then I got there to where we was this week, and that family came, and that young lady sat in the services all week. And she got up there. Her brother-in-law got up Friday night to give his testimony, and he said, Brother Steve, you didn't know that after you left that the next week she got saved. And Brianna waved at me, and she had got saved. So you just don't ever know what all the Lord's doing. But thank God He's always doing something. Luke chapter 16 Luke chapter number 16. I preached this message in Texas on Thursday night. or well, preached under much conviction, preached under such a load, and uh, got to the invitation and still not really sure what all the Lord did, but even in response of people and, and uh, know some folks, maybe their souls held between the balance of heaven and hell. And something, I, I'm really going to preach this uh, kind of in a different direction this morning, but at the same time, I believe this is the word the Lord's got for us this morning. And as we prepare for revival here, maybe it will seem like some life, sometimes uh, life gets us so busy we forgot just what the Lord has us for. Uh, I don't care where you're at right now. Honey, it's not about you making a living. It's not about you getting something else. God's got you where he's got you so you can point somebody else to Jesus. If you're in the home, if you're in the factory, if you're in the field, if you're in the schoolhouse, this life is more about you this morning. It's about that that you're doing for the cause of Christ this morning to keep another out of hell. Well, I tell you, the, the sermon on hell, no doubt preached over and over and over again, but that's all right. The Lord Jesus preached it the first time. So we're just going to share his words with you this morning with this thought. Look in uh, Luke 16, verse number 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. I want you to look at the statement the Lord Jesus made in verse number 22 where he said the beggar died and was carried. And then look what he said, the rich man also died and was buried. For just a few minutes this morning, I want to preach with this thought, final arrangements. The beggar died and was carried. The rich man died and was buried. That's what was said of them. What will be said of you? I'm reminded of what uh, where I read somewhere this week where it was on an epitaph in a, on, in a funeral, in a, in a cemetery on a tombstone, and it read this, Remember, friend, as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, soon you shall be. Prepare for death and follow me. Then it said somebody came along and read that tombstone, and then they wrote out their own reply and left it there. And the one that read it said, To follow you, I'm not content until I know which way you went. Amen. So I guess I would say this morning, the beggar died and was carried. The rich man died and was buried. Why, what moved the heart of the Lord Jesus to at this time, at this place? If you'll go back some and, and look a little before we get to chapter 16 and, and see uh, where the Lord Jesus was here. He's at one of the Pharisees' house. He's, he's went there for a supper. He, he's went there then thinking they're going to ask him about enough things that it'll trip him up. And he begins to preach these messages to kindly reveal to them the condition they're in. In Luke 16, he preaches that message of the unjust steward. How a man can't love this world and love God. How a man can't serve this world and serve God. And he finishes uh, with that great verse, verse number 13, no servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. 
Now let me tell you this morning, if you're here and you're lost, you don't know what this struggle is. You're living for the devil because he's your daddy. You serving the devil because you live in the devil's house. You working for the devil. Your outlook's for the devil. The flesh is what controls you. It's what runs you. But let me say you this morning, if you're here and you're saved, and if you've ever tried to live for the devil after you've been saved, you know what I'm preaching about now when I speak of this struggle that goes on inside the heart of a saved man. You just can't serve this world and serve God. You can't live for this world and live for God. You can't have the love of this world and your love be right for God. After he preached this message, it said the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him. In other words, they mocked him. The only other time you see this phrase derided, I believe is in the book of Luke as Jesus hung on the cross and it, it says there that they derided him or they mocked him or they really turned their nose up to him. What they did was they made fun of his preaching or they made light of what he was preaching to them. So men of God here this morning, let me tell you, if they laugh at you, if they mock you, if they seem to take lightly that that you preach, don't think that just started with you, amen. The Lord Jesus himself, they treated him the same way. Could be you've been coming to this church now for some time. Could be you've been a church member for as long as you can remember. Hey, honey, the easiest thing in the world to do is be a church member, amen. I was a Baptist way before I ever got saved. Tell you this morning, could be the Lord sent you here this morning for one more opportunity as he was giving these people one more opportunity. He, uh, he had preached uh, on so many different things and, and so many things he dealt with, but seems like he really brought it all to a close as he gets here and he begins to preach this message about two people. Say, oh, Brother Steve, this wasn't real. Oh, I beg to differ with you. Any other parable, Jesus had never called anybody by name. I believe when he said Lazarus, I believe when he said the rich man, the, the hearts of these people began to melt because they automatically knew who he was preaching about who he was talking about I believe this was a very real message I believe the Lord Jesus is about to open the door between life and death and what's waiting on the other side and really he's the only one who could preach this but God, he's the only one that had been on both sides amen he knew what it was to come from the glory world to this fleshly world and he really tried to bring home to them about this place called hell man in our day is so used to making light of that that God warns us of in the word of God. We've actually in this day have made such a joke of heaven and hell. There's more jokes on getting to the pearly gates, amen. Boy, St. Peter's standing there. Man, there's more preacher jokes about when a preacher gets to heaven. I'm, I'm, matter of fact, the world ain't even sure a preacher's going to heaven, maybe. They believe all we ought to do is, is commit adultery and get your offering and, and run on this and run on that. We've been so much jokes made about us. That's the reason uh, uh, preachers in this day, well, honey, I'm going to tell you what, the highest calling a man can have on his life, Brother Richard, is the call to preach. You can make a joke about me if you want to, but let me tell you this morning, I'm on business for the king here today. Amen. Well, what an opportunity. And then how we make fun of hell, Amen. Well, I tell you what, it's just another word. I'm talking about saved folks love to cuss and say hell, amen. I mean, that, I mean that's in the Bible. I mean, all you hear is hell, yeah, and hell, no. And as far as I'm concerned, they can go to hell. And all this guy, it's just made light off. We really knew about just that that we was talking about, what the scripture teaches about this place called hell. I tell you this morning, make no doubt about it, honey. This morning, everybody in here, son, from the center to the saint, from the bank, to the lawyer from everybody down the factory worker the teacher the student all my young people I want you to look at me right now if you know what sin is this morning if sin is real in your life this morning if you know this morning that you never have been saved but you need to be saved but Steve what's that mean that means that God's revealed to you begin to convict you that you need to be saved honey there is a place for the lost this morning and that home is hell yeah. If you die without him, it'll be too late. If the rapture comes this afternoon, thank God for that song, The Midnight Cry. Right. Well, I tell you what, I've heard all the last month John Hagee's made a fortune Go off ahead. the four blood moons. Yeah. Amen. Go ahead. 
Well, Steve, well, you've been worried about the moon, honey, but God's holding the moon. I don't care if it's white, yellow, or red. It's all in his hands. He told me to lift up my head, my redemption draweth nigh. What else has got to happen for him to come back and get his church? Nothing has to happen for him to come back and get his church. Honey, we one shout away from leaving out of here. But Steve, man, as bad as it is, we must be in the tribulation. Honey, you ain't seen nothing, amen. I thank God this morning I'll be on the other side. Well, thank God for what he gives us in his word about this place called heaven and about what he gives us about this place called hell. What a message for them. What a meaning for us. Just as sure as there's a heaven, there's a hell. How you know that, Brother Steve? Because every one time the Lord Jesus preached on heaven, 13 times he mentioned hell. Say, Brother Steve, I don't believe in hell. That don't make one better difference. That don't change a thing. Brother Steve, I, I don't believe a God who would love me would send me to hell. Honey, he ain't sending you to hell. Matter of fact, he's give you one more opportunity to be saved this morning. If you go to hell, you sent you to hell. I went around for a year and a half, Twyla and I did, went in these guard armories and handed out those Bibles to those soldiers. I'm talking about some bunch of heathen, redneck, roughneck old boys. And I'd walk in, put them Bibles in their hands, and then after they all got one, I'd stand up, and this is the way I'd start my message, Brother Richard. I'd say, if you go to hell now, it'll be your own fault. Right, and they'd go, you can't say that. <laughs> sure I can because I'm fixing to give you the way, the truth, and the life. God ain't made hell for you. He made it for the devil and his angels. If you miss heaven, it'll be because you decided to miss heaven. What well, opportunity to hear. I think about the people in this message. I, I'm not going to preach all day. I can't, amen. I, I'd have to be doing this in a little bit if I preach long, all right? Or get me a chalkboard and write it down. But I tell you this, there is some people in this message. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. The first man the Lord Jesus introduces us to is just a certain rich man. Uh, now to look at this man as far as the world was concerned, he had it all, amen. I mean, he had all a man could want to look at to look at his life on the outside. You'd say, that's the life I wanted. He had all the material things he could have. We find that in how he was clothed and where it says he fared sumptuously every day. That meant to, to make merry and splendor. It means he was never without. It meant his bank account was full. He had the nicest house. I'm going to tell you, he lived a very profitable life, a good life. All the money he would ever want. Could anybody this morning testify and say, Brother Steve, it ain't in money. Amen. Now see, most this bunch can't because y'all been broke all your life. Amen. <laughs> so we can say, I don't think money would have done it. Not only a profitable life, he lived a very popular life. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, that fared sumptuously every day. Honey, it was party, it was banquet, it, it, it was a night out. Every night was something else. He, he spent his days thinking about what he was going to do that night. Do y'all remember them days, amen? Yeah. When you'd get up in the morning and your head was hurting so bad, you'd say, never again, never again. But isn't it something about sundown, amen? You get to feeling a little better and you start thinking about what tonight can be. So he lived a very proper life. Always somewhere to go and plenty to do. Yeah. Always an invitation to go to everything. I've told y'all before, if y'all clear y'all's calendar right, me and Twyla clears ours, some of you have a lot easier life, amen? A lot of those places you get invited to, me and her don't ever get an invitation. Some of y'all got invited to things this weekend. You, you'd have said, I'm going to bring Brother yeah. Steve and Twyla with me. They'd have said, oh, no, no, they can't come. Go ahead, brother. They can't come. They, they not going to like what's going on. Well, honey, if me and her ain't going to like what's going on, why should they think you're going to like what's going on? A popular life. No doubt he had a life of position. What are you saying, Brother Steve? Well, I'm going to say this was a religious man. I'm going to say he knew where the Son of God was. I'm, I'm going to say he knew what it was to give an offering. I, I'm going to say he knew what it was to, to maybe help a missionary when they came through. To, if somebody needed some help buying some sheep, or if somebody needed this, some corn here, something there, I'm going to say he didn't mind doing something that where everybody could see it. I believe he, no doubt, maybe he was a member of the lodge. Maybe he was a 32nd degree or amen. Oh, Brother Steve, you ain't going to preach on that, are you? I can <laughs> I could put my apron on my little beanie hat, amen. 
Boy, every time I say that, I get in trouble, man. Brother Steve, you don't know what you're talking about. How you know I don't? Because it's all secret. Honey, ain't nothing about this book secret. You in something secret, you need to get back in the house of God and let that crowd have what they have and substitute the house of God. Woo! I'm going to mess around and get to preach. Thank you, Lord. Boy, no doubt he had a life of position. No doubt he was a civitan. And ain't nothing wrong with some of that stuff. Don't get me wrong, but I'm telling you, you can get to feeling real good about yourself just about that that you get in position in life. But no doubt he believed the lie of the devil. I believe it so boy thought he had a permanent life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I believe he thought everything was just going to stay the way it was. Oh, yeah. But honey, let me tell you something. If you ain't caught on, death's on your trail. Oh, yeah. Death's on my trail. It's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. Yeah, right. Brother Steve, when's your appointment? I don't know, and I'm so thankful that I don't. Yeah. Brother Steve, you scared of dying? Well, I... I, I just soon be a rapture man, amen. Yeah, right. What are you saying, Brother Steve? Well, I know God's going to have grace, and I had not got there yet. But when I get there, there'll be grace there. Yeah. But I know this, we all dying a little more every day. Honey, it ain't gonna always be like it. Matter of fact, you dying a little more today than you did yesterday. Right. Pull your shoes off, smell your feet, amen. Son, that old body's a playing out on you, giving out on you. Boy, the greatest mission Baptist church ought to be able to testify right here. Honey, we've kept the bone doctors and the hip doctors and the feet doctors and the knee doctors, honey. We they built another wing off what we give right here, amen. Telling you what, way in that man, old Richard said, hey, man. <laughs> oh, all about it. So there is. There is a man in this message that on the outside, he looked like he had it all. Let me say as far as things go, he did have it all on the inside, but let me tell you, honey, he had nothing. Or on the outside, but he had nothing on the inside. That's right. But so many times I, I thought and I asked this question the other night as I, as I introduced him to the rich man, then I told him about Lazarus. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Well, you talk about an old boy that had it bad. Just a good for nothing old poor beggar. And he's sick and he's crippled and he has to be laid at the rich man's gate daily and he's got boils and no doubt probably some leprosy. He, he's got hunger. He, 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 the only friends he has is the dogs that comes and licks his sores and all he wanted was the crumbs from the rich man's table. See, this tells me something about the rich man and what I see Lazarus wanted. The rich man, even though he had it all, he didn't want to give nothing to nobody. Because in that day, they didn't eat with knives and forks and spoons, and some of us still don't in this day, amen. But in that day, they did. They ate with their fingers. And, uh, and then they cleaned their hands with the bread. And they would wipe their hands on that bread, and big, big chunks of a loaf is what they would use to clean their hands. And then they would just pitch that off a table. Lazarus just wanted what they throwed off the table, what they wiped their hands with. Yeah. But the rich man wouldn't even give him that, Brother Lane. He wouldn't even let him have that. And I think the reason was I think he knew if I take care of that beggar, then there'll be some more beggars yeah. show up there. Yeah. And I think he thought if I treat him bad enough, won't anybody else want to lay at my gate? And if I'll just let him die, then won't none of that kind come here. Tell you where we at in the church today. I'm going to tell you where we at in the independent fundamental King James dress wear a white shirt, part your hair right, spit white and do right. Very easy for us to get very confident in what we have here, who we are in here. God only blesses right here. But you look up and somebody comes in, they don't look like us, smell like us, dress like us, talk like us. And we just begin to kindly put up with them people but in the back of our mind hoping maybe they'll just go off a scene right. and them kind won't come here. Go ahead. Anybody ever been in a place when you walked in you know you should have brought some ice skates with yes, you? Sir. I'm talking about cold, dead. Yes, sir. Go ahead. 
God help us. Greatest Mission Baptist Church is about people. Honey, we all got issues. We all got problems. We all got messes. We all come out of this and come out of that. The greatest mission in this day till Jesus comes is still being a soul station for hurting, helpless, hopeless people. Thank God. No doubt there was some people in the message, but thank God there was a passion that came. The beggar died. The rich man died. Death is the great equalizer. I mean it's all level ground at the foot of the cross and at the foot of the casket. It's all level ground. Right. I'm telling you when your day comes for you. And it said in the story that Lazarus died first. Verse 22. It came to pass that the beggar died. And it begins to tell. And he said he just died. But then it's got a little sub note. He was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Now it doesn't say when Lazarus died that the world did anything for him. As a matter of fact, what the world did for Lazarus in that day for the beggar was somebody picked his old cold dead lifeless body up, throwed him on a cart, and they took him to the trash pile. Amen. And that that they did on the way of taking him to the trash pile, they just rode him by everybody. They turned their nose. They, they held their head up from him. That's that good for nothing old Lazarus who all he ever did was lay at the rich man's gate. But do you know what Lazarus had been for a lifetime? He had been one who it didn't ever say he complained at the rich man's gate. Didn't ever say he preached at the rich man. It just says he was just faithful to be there. I believe the Lord was using a lifetime of Lazarus to try to point to out somebody else that there's two ways in this thing. Boy, there's no mention of a funeral for Lazarus. He, he was thrown on the pile. Amen. We'll get back to him. Then it said the rich man died and was buried. Can y'all imagine the kind of funeral they had? We see it in our day. Boy, you take somebody, I guarantee you, if uh, some heathen had been some kind of entertainer or somebody who who was a, a, a big person, a star in this day, they die. You can't even watch nothing on TV, amen. They'll show it, son, from start to finish. And that's what it would have been like for the rich man. I'm telling you, the greatest service to Paul bears, and no doubt somebody preached him right on into heaven, amen. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it amazing? You can go to the funeral to the biggest thug in town. I mean, he ain't never had nothing for God. He ain't never done nothing for anybody. His life has been for the devil, the whole thing. And some literally livered no backbone, well, something to get up instead of taking right. an opportunity right. to preach the truth. He'll get up and say, well, man, he was this and he was that. Everybody going to heaven, amen. Yeah. All roads lead to heaven. Oh, he did something one time. He, I, I remember his grandma telling him she took him to Bible school when he was six and they had 48 saved in Bible school that year and he was one of them 48. Honey, if your life is made up of that, you got to look back 40 years ago to ever find where Jesus was real in your life. You better look and see what happened 48 years ago. But oh, not this man. Well, I tell you what, I asked him the other night, which one would you want to be? Would you want to be the rich man or would you want to be Lazarus? Now, most folks is kind of leaning toward the rich man, verse 19, 20, and 21. Amen. I tell you, Brother Steve, if I got a choice now, I believe I'd rather have that nice stuff instead of not having nothing. Oh, let me tell you this morning, church, if you're saved this morning, you can have nothing and not realize you ain't got nothing. Because he'll be with you there in you nothing. Amen. I've heard that preacher right there say right where he sat, best days of my life. Amen. Amen. I knew him when he was in a truck that tall with rims that high. Running from the Lord as hard as he could run. Meet him on the street and couldn't even look me in the eye because of the life we was living. But thank God he had a plan. Thank God when I see him now. Amen. It's a smile on his face and a song in his heart. Me and I was with a man this week named Brother James Sutton. Had a car wreck and he's 15 year old. He, he ain't got near the movement Richard has. He fed us lunch on Wednesday at his house. He looked at me and said, Brother Steve, the day I was 15 year old and that truck flipped and I ended up here. Greatest day of my life. 
If it hadn't have been for that day, I'd have been in hell. Greatest day in my life. Honey, you may think you got nothing. Lift your head, your redemption draws nigh. Whoa. Glory. You and God ain't nothing. Amen. Woo. I am. But he died. But an amazing thing, Jesus put a little old tag right there, amen. Yep. He was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Yes, he was. I am. See, Barack Obama this morning, he ain't got my address. Amen. Probably a good thing he yeah. don't. <laughs> I think about some great heads of state this morning. Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi. None of them know me. They... I mean, if I die today, if I drop dead here in a little bit, it'll mean nothing to them. Right. As far as my name and lights, I'm telling you what, I told Twyla when she was 16, I called her the first time, honey, just stay with me. I'll take you places. <laughs> well, this week I pulled her up to Alba, Texas. Pulled out in the middle of a bunch of cow pastures. Oh, we got out and walked in that place, a little old remnant about like y'all sitting there. I got up and I said, my name's Brother Steve Parrish. I pastor the greatest mission Baptist church. And it's good to have my darling with me this week. Amen. Son, you talk about blessed, man. Woo! The angels had his address. They know where he at. Why? Because the one who employs them is living inside of you. Y'all know how they can track folks with these phones? But that only works till your power goes off, amen. I thank God spiritually my power don't ever go off because of who's living inside of me. What are you saying, Brother Steve? On my worst day of sin, on my worst day of backsliding, when I thought I was so far away, I never could hear from God anymore. Beep. 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 Praise Beep. the Lord. Beep. Praise the Lord. Son, He'll come right where you are. Deal with you and the shape you in. Yeah. Brother Steve, you ain't afraid of dying? Well, now that I think about it, I don't guess I am. Amen. Amen. Why is that? Because I won't never know when I die. All I'll know is I'll look up and there'll be a carrying party come from me. Amen. There was a burying party come for the, the, the rich man, but there was a carrying party come for last. Yes. he been laid at his gate daily. Hey, folks been carrying him for his whole life. But honey, ain't nobody ever carried him like him angels carried him. Amen. Matter of fact, the word right here means escort. He just led him right on in. Now I got to thinking about that. Never had seen this this week. Man, y'all got to listen fast. Never had seen this this week and I just thought about it. Lazarus didn't have, or the Lazarus didn't have nobody. So they sent angels after them. But think about who he may just going to be going to send after us. You think about it, man. You got lost folk in, I mean, you got saved folk in heaven tonight. And when they know that, and no doubt the saved folk ain't be watching stuff, amen. I mean, they said they's rejoicing in heaven when one gets saved. Well, if you here this morning lost and you had a mama and daddy or husband or wife or son or daughter or grandma or grandpa, it's already in heaven. Well, if you get saved this morning, honey, they gonna rip the streets up, amen. But just wonder. When your number comes up, oh, yeah. who's going to say, I want to go? Oh, yeah. Y'all going to get them to leave? I want to go. I just don't see God saying, you can't go with me. See, I don't see Daddy saying, I want to go. Lord, uh, that's, I'm going after mine, I want to go. Woo! going to be sweet, ain't it? Or the places they went. In hell, he lift up his eyes, a rich man. In hell was where he'll be. Let me tell you this morning. If you never have been saved, and you know right now, you know that you make me believe what you live with, you're ready to live with, but honey, I just got, are you ready to die with it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, when you work out your own salvation, when you examine yourself as the Word of God says do, when you bring it to the Lord and say, Lord, am I really saved? And He either gives you that peace or either it continues to trouble you. You better realize this morning. If you're going to hell, there's some things you ought to know about hell. Your eternal home. Just sit down sometime. Take the Word of God and look up all the different references to just what it is. Sheol in the Old Testament and Hades. And, and, and you see, uh, this morning, hell as the final judgment would be. That hell ain't open for business yet. Nope. That place prepared for the devil and his angel, it ain't open for business yet. But honey, there is a place of torment right now. Hades, uh, the Lord Jesus used the word, it's open for business right now. Oh, yeah. And from what the, the rich man says, it's a place of flames, it's a place of worms, it's a place of darkness. You just start reading through it when Jesus preached on hell. He told you all about lost person, what your eternal home was going to be. He said it's a place of torments. Look that meaning up in the Greek and it means extreme mental anguish or physical pain. So no doubt the places that they're at, the rich man, he, no doubt as he looks and he begins to see where he's at. He, he sees where he's at but he's able to see Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. Like I told you in this day, hell or Hades was in it, it had two different rooms in it, if you will. It had a paradise room. Then it had a place of torment. It had a, a place of torment room. From what the Word of God says, there was a gulf fix. There was, they, they couldn't go from one to the other. One side couldn't go to the other side. So this was before the resurrection. Uh, the place of paradise. Uh, those folks, those Old Testament folks who had kept the statutes of the Lord, who had lived by faith, who had always used the blood for remission of sin. He was just kind of there on the layaway plan. Amen. These Old Testament saints, they'd been living looking to the cross. And their faithfulness had been blessed, so now they're in paradise. I'm going to tell you what, from what I read and what the people had been since Genesis all the way to, till we get to this day, it wasn't probably a whole lot of folks in the paradise section. Yeah. Son, most folks, they didn't live for God. They didn't live for, for the blood. They, they didn't look to Calvary. And I'm going to tell you what this, this morning, honey. If you're here and you're lost, let me tell you what, you're going to be in the biggest crowd, all right? Hell enlarges it's itself daily, all right? It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as they drop off into hell. So we see this place called hell, but we also see the place of Abraham's bosom, a place of rest. But then some things that they actually took with them. Oh, no, but Steve, I've heard that joke. There ain't no trailer hitches on Hearst. Well, I'm going to tell you what, honey. You leave this world, there are some things you're going to take with you. The, the, the rich man did. Verse 23 says, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. But Abraham's son said, Son, remember that in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So the things the rich man carried with him. In those verses, we see that he could see. Yep. He could hear. He could speak. He could feel. He could reason. But above all, he could remember. See, your memory will be with you for all eternity. The life that you had and all God's grace gave you in this life that you trampled on. I told you this morning the message was one was carried and one was buried. Do you realize at this point of life you're being carried? God's carrying you from place to place, time from time, giving you opportunity after opportunity to be saved. Could very well be the, the reason you're here this morning looking back on it. You, how did I end up in that place? Hey, God just carrying you along. The grace of God just bringing you along. 
And no doubt the, the lost man, he thought life was going to be permanent. Maybe you need the preacher to hear you remind you this morning, none of this is going to last. You one step closer to eternity than you've ever been before. But what God in His grace did, He gave you one more opportunity this morning to be saved. So He carried you along. But now the rich man's not been carried anymore. Now he's been buried. It's all over for him as far as what he'll do with grace. Because see, there ain't no going back and fixing this now. Amen. You had a lifetime to make it right and you chose not to. So he's remembering, no doubt. He saw Lazarus in his mind again. And no doubt those in hell right now. What they're doing in hell right now. Now Steve, are they, are they in torments from the flames and from the worms? And no doubt all that's bad enough, but I believe their memory this morning. Amen. I believe right now they're thinking every time that God dealt with them, every opportunity He gave them to be saved, the people and the preachers and the provision that He made. Yes, sir. You know what blows me away? The morning I surrendered to preach, the reason God called me to preach was for you. Oh, yeah. Amen. And the reason He called me to preach is you was for me. Most of y'all didn't even know in 2010. Didn't even know you. And now what he's done over opportunities in your life, in my life, y'all the best friends I got. Hey, y'all my family. Matter of fact, there's a whole lot of y'all I'd rather see coming as my family. Amen. You're just looking. I ain't talking about my close family. Straighten that out. Folks, it's your comfortable around. Folks, God gives you. No doubt he possessed some things, but no doubt it was not only some possessions in hell, they was some praying in hell. Yes. Verse 24 says he cried. And what he prayed for? Just one drop of water. Isn't it amazing when you go from being carried to buried? A man that had so much wanted so little. Oh, yeah. He just wanted one drop of water. But then we also see where he's ready for some preaching, amen. You take time to read it. He, he says, I got five brothers. He said, if you'll send Lazarus, said, send him that, that they can go and preach. And isn't it amazing? In a world where nobody wants preaching. In hell right now, they begging for preaching. Told you the Lord called me to preach for you and you for me. God means for some relationship to be between the shepherd and the sheep. Right, right. Boy, it'll be a bond. It'll be a sweetness. And it's something how most folks don't want to undo and no preach. Twilight yeah. gets tickled at me all the time. We'll be somewhere. Man, I'll walk up and there'll be some old roughneck bunch and I'll always try to drop a little old nugget, you know, somewhere. <laughs> man, you can just see all the blood run out of me, man. You can just see them. And they wishing that we wasn't there. Now, if he was a drunk or a harlot or anything else standing there, he'd be fine, amen. You're right. What about if you ever been anywhere and you ain't been dressed like you ought to and you run up on me? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it something how God will work that out? <laughs> I mean, you're just going to run to town and run into Walmart. Don't tell me that, John. You know where you're going. You know what you got on. Amen. But I ain't got a clue you're going to be there and we'll start down the aisle and there we are. How you doing? Bless him, Lord. Bless him. <laughs> well, when something going on, you got to and you was there and you had a big time but don't nobody know it and then you'd be somewhere that week and say, man, old so-and-so was there. I seen Brother Steve and told him you was there. You did what? <laughs> Oh God. Oh God. Boy, I tell you what. Preaching is coming out of hell. He said, just send them a preacher. Send them Lazarus if one from the dead to go. Abraham said, No, son. He said, They got Moses, they got the prophets, they got the word of God. If they ain't gonna get it from preaching, then they ain't finna get it. Amen. Let me tell you this morning. 
God sent you some preachers in your life because he chose the foolishness of preaching to save them which was lost. Now you may not have never had nothing for a preacher your whole life, but I pray right here at this place, God will let you fall in love with the man of God who gives you the word of God, who's concerned over your soul, who don't want you to die and go to hell. Thank you, Lord. You'll get a word of God from the preacher. Then they was pleading from hell, and I'm through. He pled with him, said, Get him, let him just come to where I'm at. Give me a drop of water to ease this torment that I'm in. Let him go to my brother's house. Let him do this and let him do that. Let me tell you what, hell ain't gonna rehabilitate you. Hell ain't gonna make you no better. Ain't gonna be no parole board meeting and ever let you out. Brother Steve, that ain't fair. I believe it is. Why is that? Because of what we find in verse 26. Beside all this, all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. That's saying, even son, if I wanted to get to where you was and bring this drop of water, I can't. Why is that Father Abraham? This boy was a Jew. He was a religious man. He called him Father Abraham. He said, why is that? He said, because of this great gulf that has been fixed. And the word gulf right here. In the Greek, it's the word chasma. C-H-A-S-M-A. It's where we get our word chasm from. That's a medical term that means open wound. And what Abraham is telling the rich man who's in hell, he said, between you and me, there's an open wound that I can't pass through. You know what keeps a lost person in hell? An open wound. Where's God's grace for folks in hell? He turns and looks to those in hell. But as he turns and looks at them, his son's seated on his right hand and he still sees the open wound. There's no scar. Jesus ain't toting scars. He's toting open wounds. And when God sees those open wounds, when he remembers the nails in the hands and that open wound of that spear in his side, the wrath of God is kindled. And as he looks and he realizes the blood that was spilled out of his darling son so you didn't have to go to hell, he sees the blood and it infuriates him. He says for you to reject the very best, don't tell me you ought not be in hell. I gave you the best to keep you out of hell. Yes. But then Brother Ken, you know what keeps a saved man in hell? An open wound. Brother Steve, how you think something sorry as you is going to get to heaven? (laughs) Well, Dwayne Morris is a big old boy, amen. He's a bug killing machine, hey man. <laughs> you got a past, haven't you, Dwayne? Oh, it ain't all pretty. Know what sin is. Know what to make a mess is. Dwayne Morris's day comes. And they send that carrying party for him. You know who they gonna carry him to? They gonna deliver him to the Son. Because John 14 yeah. says, No man cometh to the Father but yeah. by me. It's appointed the man wants to die and after that the judgment. The judgment is your time to stand before the Father. But you ain't going to stand there by yourself. When Dwayne gets there and the Lord Jesus the angels hand him off to the Lord Jesus and the Father's on his throne and the Lord Jesus turns and says Daddy, Dwayne's come home. He don't see the wing without seeing the open wound. Amen. Amen. He sees the blood. He sees the blood. Amen. And instead of infuriating him, he shouts glory for my son, the lamb who was slain. Thank you for the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. One man was buried. One man was carried. What's going to be said of you? I read of a family this week. A mother and a father and a son. The mother died during childbirth. The son grew up never knowing his mother. 
He was raised in a single home with just his father. You can imagine, maybe some of you that were raised in a single home, you know what it is, the closeness, the bond that's there. And the story said as the young man began to get older, he and his dad both enjoyed collecting art. Now, I ain't talking about First Monday art, I'm talking about they love paintings and expensive paintings. And they began to go and to art galleries and to things like that and they began to invest in these paintings. They would both look at them and the paintings they liked, that's what they would buy. And it was just something that they enjoyed as a father and a son and before long their art collection had grown to it was really something to see. As often happens, life, the young man got older, he went into the military, he went off to war and he got killed in the war. Father had son, or news that his son was dead, said the father just became a recluse. He didn't get out of the house, didn't do anything, stopped going to the art galleries. Just, his heart wasn't in it anymore since he didn't have his boy. So two years later, there was a knock at the door. He opened the door and there was a young man in uniform standing there. He said, I was your son's best friend. Said he and I spent two years in the army together. Said we went to war together. Said I know everything about you. He told me about how you raised him and how y'all loved each other. He said, sir, I was the one that your son, he was dragging me out of the field of fire when he got killed. He said, sir, I'm not a great artist. He said, but I tell you what I did. I, I sat down and I painted a portrait of your son from a picture that he and I had made together. He handed the father and he unveiled it and he looked at it said the old man stood there and just hugged on the portrait and said he began to kiss on it and said he said my son my son my only son it became the father's greatest work of art some years later the father passed away and they had the estate sale well everybody knew the collection they had so art buyers from all over the country showed up and said the Lawyer and the auctioneer stood up and the auctioneer unveiled the first painting and it was the painting of that son. Said He said, we're going to begin the sale with this painting. And said the people said, we don't want that. That's junk. Said, said save it for last. We're here for the good stuff. Amen. We want the priceless works of art. That's what we want to be in on. Said the auctioneer said, it must be done in this order. Said he began to open the bidding at one dollar. Nobody said anything. Fifty cents. Nobody said anything. Said on the back row, a man in overall stood up and said, he said, I, I knew this family and said, I came just to kindly watch over their stuff. And he said, I ain't got any money. All, all I got to the world is five dollars. Said, but I'll give five dollars for that picture of that boy. <coughs> said the auctioneer said, sold for five dollars. Said then the auctioneer sat down and said the lawyer stood up and said the auction is over. Said the people said no, there's still, there's still much art to buy. There's still much to see. Said the lawyer opened up and the first statement in the will read, he that gets my son, he gets it all. Yeah. Uh -huh. Glory. Tell you this morning, honey, the Lord may not know your name, but heaven does. He that gets the son has it all. Amen. The rich man owned everything, but he possessed nothing. Amen. Lazarus owned nothing, but he possessed everything. Amen. One man was carried. One man was buried. What's it said of you today? Father, we thank you for your word. Amen. Lord, I pray even in the stillness of this moment, God, you'd begin to grip our hearts. God, if there's a lost person in this building, they own good ground today. God, you've set every bit of this up for them. Lord, if they go to hell after this day, God, all they'll remember is this day right here. God, they'll remember this building. They'll remember the faces of these people. They'll remember the carpet. God, I believe most of all they'll remember your words. Yeah. Father, we, we've gone so cold and indifferent to you. Lord, I'm afraid in a place where we say you're welcome, we don't even pray for lost people anymore. 
we look at them and we think, well, I wish you best for them. God, I pray right now, they some saints of God who don't care what people think. They got a hold of heaven right now on somebody's behalf in this building. God, today be the day of salvation. Lord, they some folks here may be one step away from being buried. But God, you've carried them to a place where the caring of the Holy Spirit can continue throughout all eternity. Lord, in the stillness of this moment, do a work. Grip our hearts. God, set this place on fire to stand in the gap and to pray for hurting people again. God, we're all here today because somebody prayed for us and we didn't have sense to pray for ourselves. God, fill our altars up again. God, let tears flow from our eyes again. Lord, let us get off our mind what all we can own in this world and get back to what we have possessions of in heaven. Bless in Jesus' name. As Miss Twilight begins to play, we're not going to have any singing. You stand to your feet right there where you are. If you come to this altar and pray for some lost person, I guarantee you, you're standing in the gap for somebody. If you're here this morning, you're lost. God sent this word for you. You know right now there's no way you're ready to stand for God because you'll stand there by yourself. You won't be carried to the presence of the Lord. You'll be buried. And in hell, you'll lift your eyes. What about you, child of God? I said, Brother Steve, I, I just can't stand to hear a message preached on hell. Hey, I tell you what, it challenges me to stand in the gap for the lost, but I'm going to tell you what else it does. It makes me lift hands and say, Thank you, Jesus, that hell ain't going to ever be my home saving something like me glory to God in the Lamb opportunity one man was carried one man was buried what about it what about it brother Steve I'm alright I say amen glory to God if you alright it's because of an open wound Brother Steve, I'm just not sure. Well, I tell you what, we serve a God who's in the sure business. He'll show you this morning the place where that open wound became real to you. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. Christians praying. Heard it all my life. This is the last verse. This is your verse. We take that for granted here on this side of eternity, but don't you know those in hell today keep hearing that last verse over and over. They realized it was just for them. 2,000 years now this man's been in hell. 2,000 more he'll be in hell. 2,000 years now old Lazarus. Ephesians chapter 4 says the Lord Jesus went and He led captivity captive. He cleared out that paradise section. He led them to the Father. Amen. Amen. All God's people say. Amen. Amen. One man was carried. One man was buried. Boy, ain't nothing like being carried, is it? right. Hey Amen. If you're here and you don't know, I preached this Thursday night. Got to the invitation. I led a sinner's prayer. I said, now if you prayed that prayer, I want you to just look up at me and nod at me. And there was a lady probably in her 70s in the back of that church. She looked up and nodded at me. Put her head back down. She didn't ever step out and make it public. So, Brother Steve, she must have <coughs> got saved. Oh, she called on the blood sitting right back there. Amen. I guarantee you, he get in, he'll come out. Amen. 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 Glory to God. All right, six o'clock this evening, Brother Silas Clark, be here tonight. You want to come meet this young man and be an encouragement to him? He'll encourage our hearts tonight. Thank you for praying for me this morning. Amen. I was talking. <laughs> Amen. All right, pray for each other this week. Good to see everybody here this morning. Let's bow our heads.
<laughs> Brother Wayne Morrison, pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for allowing us to be here today, Lord. Lord, I, I'm just thankful, Lord, that I'm here because of a prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, thankful. Yes. Lord, my wife prayed for me for a long time. Bless her, Lord. Bless her. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just can't thank you enough. Lord, I thank you for this church the preacher. Yes. Lord, I thank you for giving him the word to speak to your people. Yes. Lord, we just don't know how good we have. We can look around and hear all these answered prayers. We're here because of you. Lord, give us strength and courage to go out and share your word. Yes. Lord, just, just help us, Lord. We... We are helpless people. Lord, I seek you for guidance, Lord. And I pray that you strengthen me for days to come. Be with our preacher, Lord. Strengthen him, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Use him in a mighty way. Lord, I just ask all that, that uh, you bring us all back here tonight safe, Lord. Be with this brother that's going to preach tonight, Lord. Just give him the liberty to preach, Lord. And I just, just want to tell you that I love you. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.